we ready for a Q&A? Yeah. We are ready for a Q&A. Hey everyone. So, if you've already watched my second Day in the Life of a Researcher video, you will have already met Felix, who is my friend, who also did the course that I'm doing right now, is a research assistant in cancer research, and he is also doing a PhD very soon. When did you actually start your PhD? Um, officially, I'm starting it in September. <sighs> How exciting. So, I thought it would be a really good idea to make a separate video just talking to Felix about his experiences because I feel like when it comes to cancer research and all of, you know, biomedical sciences and degrees and masters and PhDs and etc, he has done a lot. So I feel like he's a very experienced person to speak to. And I'm 23, you think I'm old. He's 27. Don't look it, do I? He doesn't look it. He doesn't look you. Luckily for you, you don't look it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's really old. Um, okay, so let's start with the first question. Drum roll! I can't, I've got a coffee in my hand. Um, oh, okay, if the light is changing, we're, sorry, we're in front of a big window. window. So, question number one. Why cancer research? I... It's a good question. I believe that cancer research, what we have at the moment, which I saw in the clinic a few years back, mm -hmm. it's very primitive. Um, the method they're using, there's so much that is on paper that theoretically could work, but it's not being implemented. So I want to take it from paper to the patient suffering right now. Yeah. And and I think what our, well, I say our course, my course and the course that Felix also did, what its primary aim is, is to translate all of this information, because we do have a lot of data on cancer research. The difficulty is taking the information we have and being able to apply it to patients um, in actual clinics and in hospitals. So that's the aim of this course. And so I guess moving on to question two, it's a bit of a segue. When you did this master's, um, what were some of the obstacles and challenges you had and what do you think you gained from doing it? The biggest obstacle I had, it would definitely be time management. Time management. Oh God. Um, you, you, we both consume a lot of this to get through the day. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I was like shaking right out of it. Um, when I say time management, I don't mean, for me personally anyway, I don't mean how much time you spend at work. I mean spending too much time at work. Now, I have a massive passion in cancer research to the extent where at some point I actually had no other life. All my friends couldn't see me because I was just working. Um, that is, I, I learned of it through a very hard way. Um, it's ironic. To manage time yeah. outside of this master's. <laughs> and it's ironic that we're having this conversation because today is a Sunday and yeah. we, well, I say we, I am doing my work. Felix is here kindly helping me because I can't use some of the equipment alone because I'm still a student. Mostly because you're off at breakfast, but yeah. <laughs> Liability. Thanks, Felix. That's what he's trying to say. I didn't say that, but I know the night. So, the next question I want to ask is, as I said, you are a research assistant at the moment, so um, I want you to tell them a little bit about what it's like to be a research assistant doing cancer research. But also, the next question would be, um, what are you most looking forward to about starting a PhD as opposed to just being a research assistant? So firstly, what do you do as a research assistant and why are you excited to do your PhD? Right, um, so what I do is quite different to most research assistants, um, but it is different at every lab, it depends on your boss. My boss works very closely with the hospital, um, as well as the pharmaceutical, and he has two labs in the academia world. By, by definition, uh, because I'm a huge nerd in this, he knows this, he has put me in contact in all three world. So my research assistant position works between hospital patients, um, taking samples from them, uh, and working between clinicians, doctors, um, and academics, trying to work out how something in a test tube can help a patient suffering right now in there, using something that my boss has contact in the pharma form. Again, again, like we said at the start of this video, 
the, the research that is very trendy right now is learning how to take information that we have and translate it to patients. So that's something you're heavily involved in now. And um, yes. if you guys have any questions about specifics, leave them below because I don't want to like bombard you with lots of details about actual projects and stuff because I think um, it's not that relatable. But I guess moving on to the second question, what are you looking most forward to about starting a PhD as opposed to being a research student? Minus the um, the pay cut, the massive pay cut that you're oh going God. to get. Oh God. Which, which again, one more thing I should add before you start is that um, the thing with research, guys, is that if you do start it, you've got to love it. You've got to be in it for the science because the pay's not great. Mm. You have to work a lot. Um, it's definitely not a nine to five job. It's very unstable, but you really do have to love it. Um, I completely agree. And I feel like you're a prime example of somebody who really, really loves what they do. So for you, yeah. what is the distinction between going from a research assistant to a PhD student? The, uh, the first and most obvious distinction is in four years, I get a doctor in my name. That would be fun. Exactly. Uh, um, I personally wouldn't recommend doing it in the US because now they're trying to take it off. But the uh, but, um, biggest difference realistically is that I can take what I do further. See, what I do now, I'm basically uh, an extension of my boss's arm. Mm -hmm. yes. He wants something done, he gives me this deadline, I get it done through my specialty, which most people in the world doesn't have, which is very exciting by itself. Mm -hmm. But if I don't at least get a doctorate and beyond, I will never be able to take this initiative myself. I will always be the vice captain of the ship. Yes, and this is the thing, I mean, you kind of get this gist when you're doing a master's, as in you are guided by your project supervisor, but you do have a lot of say in what you decide to research within the capacity. Mm. With a PhD, it's like your baby, you can do... I mean, you can choose to specialize in something that nobody else in the world can do, and that's I think the that's whole very exciting. PhD. Yes, and, and the thing is, you have a bit more freedom about what you want to research. Yes. As opposed to, this is what I need to do, so I have to do this, and I can't deviate from it. Yes, um, I completely agree. If you were to choose a PhD, you would actually want to choose something that you would want to do mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You you are going to spend four years doing this course. It's a long time, yeah. But this four years, for academics by the way, you're not going to earn any money basically. Mm -hmm. You're going to spend most of your life in at work or answering emails. Um, and Drinking more importantly, you're probably not going to retire until you die. Um, <laughs> Which it's not that, that grim, guys, but I mean, he, <laughs> he's being realistic and I think yes. it's important for people to know this side as well. Because I paint a flowery um, picture sometimes yeah. and I think it's the, the, harsh, the realities can be quite harsh too. But if you love what I do, the idea of being paid to do something until you die is a dream. Mm -hmm. um, which is my dream. Is and it being paid to do something that you would want to do for free anyway? That's exactly what yes. I told. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, if you were to do a PhD, I would pick something that you're basically signing up for what you end up doing mm. for the next 70 years of your life. Yes. That sounds grim if it's something you hate. Yes, th that's a very good point actually. If you think you're going to hate it within, this is why this master's is good because it gives you a taster. Mm. And if you realize that you are really passionate and you do really love it, then it's a good way to proceed. Yeah, like signing up for 70 years of happiness and pay for it. Perfect. Pretty good. Okay, so my very last question is this. A lot of my audience are quite, I mean, we have an age range, but a lot of them are quite young. So a lot of them are currently doing their GCSEs, doing their A-levels, uh, or maybe they've just started um, a degree, either in biomedical sciences or life sciences or something along those lines. What advice do you have for those people who are, you know, GCSEs, A-levels, either just before or just started university? Or for, for the kind of people who want to pursue our route and research? I would say this applies for most career, but research quite specifically as well, is that if you're interested in something, so if, if you're interested in, in doing research at such a young age, which is unusual, um, usually it means you have read an article or seen someone on TV show something very cool. Look up that author uh, or look up the presenter, even Bill Nye, he actually replies emails. Email them directly, say what you do are interesting. Can I um, have a chat with you? Yes. Actually ask them everything you want to ask them. Um, 
and you would not believe what you learn from them in just yeah. maybe a small email reply. I think that's yes. very good advice. I think be proactive, ask questions, don't be scared of getting no, getting no's. I think that's something I've definitely learned through doing this. And guys, I would love to continue this, but I, my battery is flashing, so I feel like I need to wrap this up. Thank you so much, Felix. And if you guys have any specific questions for him, leave it below. There might be a part two. There might be a part two. Anyway, until next time, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give that thumbs up and all that kind of stuff if you enjoyed it. And until next time, have a great day, and I will see you later. Mwah! And you need to do too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>